the low literacy levels among U.S. adults could be costing the economy $2.2 trillion. This is on page three. Uh, a new study of Gallup, this is a Forbes story, a new study by Gallup on behalf of Barbara Bush Foundation for Family Literacy finds that low levels of uh, adult literacy could be costing in the U.S. as much as $2.2 trillion a year. According to the U.S. Department of Education, 54% of U.S. adults, 16 to 74, about 130 million p- uh, people lack proficiency in literacy, reading below the equivalent of a sixth grade. Wait, let me say that one more time. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm blown away right now. According to U.S. Department of Education, 54% of U.S. adults, 16 to 74, okay, that's 130 million people, lack proficiency in literacy, reading below the equivalent of a sixth grade level. The average annual income of adults who are at minimum proficiency levels for literacy, level three, is below $63,000, significantly higher than the average roughly $48,000 earned by adults who are just below proficiency, level two, and much higher than those levels at level zero, which is 34. If all U.S. adults were able to move up at least to level three literacy proficiency, it would generate an additional $2.2 trillion of annual income uh, in the country equal to 10% of GDP. Tom. Yeah, it's unbelievable. If you had read me the wow. details of this story and said, what is the percentage of this being true? Yeah. I'd say 1%. I'd say there is no is way Forbes. that this is, but it is true. And it's it's incomprehensible. 130, that's over a third of us right now. Based over, on a, well over. Based well on over. a 335 he, census. Here's and a, yet you've got this. I mean, you know, and then, and then you have these big cities where it's really, really bad. You know, in L.A., New York, Chicago, San Francisco. No Fs. You know, they said if these big cities, if, if 10 percent, they said the GDP would increase more than 10 percent in these big cities if they just got everybody up to the sixth grade yeah. level. That is mind boggling. And yeah. here, think about this, too. What's happened in the last year? Kids aren't learning anything. That's right. Right? Especially in big school districts in the big cities. It's a wasted year, and it's probably a wasted three or five years because they don't care. That's right. Their parents can't force them to go to school. So now you're raising a whole new generation that can't read or won't read, and it's the most easily fixable problem there is. I mean, if you think about it, to teach people to have... You know, just remedial English skills is not that difficult if the country wanted to, you know, embark it's on It's kind of difficult to get rid of teachers' unions, though, so. Well, what do you think about this, Danielle? What do you think about this? I think this is the teachers' unions. Can you unpack that? Look, if, if COVID has taught us anything, it's that the teachers are not advocates for the students. The teachers are advocates, advocates for themselves. And school districts, the way that they're designed, the the money goes to the administration. There's way too much in the way of management. You don't pay teachers enough. We've learned that you can, you know, you could theoretically just go virtual. You could go virtual in the classroom. You could hire somebody for a million dollars a year, a rock star teacher, and have him teach the kids and have him be engaged, kind of like, I don't know, a Jay Leno or something, but just pay him a ton of money and then teach these kids. And you could do that but you'd have to disband the unions. Wait, time out. Are you saying that you could do that virtually? Because I don't think kids would no, sit no, still. No, 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 no. I am, I am saying that you can do virtual teaching if you get somebody who kids are like, hot damn. I'm talking about like a rock star. I'm saying deplete the pool of educators in this country to where you get it to where you're, you're talking about people who are so engaging. Yeah. People are like, this is better than TikTok. I've got to, I've got to go see this person. Because you, you don't yeah, pay, you don't maybe. pay teachers enough and you pay administrators too much, and it's the structure of teachers' unions, and they've screwed over children, and I think that they should be, I think collective bargaining should be made unconstitutional. I look at teachers' unions right now, and this has only happened in the last year, year and a half. They're a political organization. They always have been, though. Yeah, but they're more in your face about it now, and it's more evident that that's their strategy. Yeah, and, and it's all this great inflation and or deflation or whatever you want. You know, just let let them pass. You know, give give them trophies for participating. I can't believe this. A sixth grade reading level. Mm-hmm. That's unbelievable. But, but by the way, let, me, let me tell you why I like this. I like this because, you know, it's it's selling me. So so, but this is being written by who? Can can you look at who wrote this article? Who's the person that wrote this article? Don't. I know it's Forbes, but I want to know who wrote it. Right, but you got to be careful with Forbes. I thought Forbes yeah. is owned by no, them. No, no, no. Forbes did this story is China. on, on a so. report, on a, on a big government. No, no, but go to that article, Tyler, and let's see who wrote it. That's like the USDA report that said that food stamps need to go up by 32%. That one. Editors pick Michael. Who is he? Senior he's a contributor. contributor. He's a contributor. I'm a former... University president who writes higher education. Go Google him. Google him. 
Uh, take his name and just Google him. Yeah. I don't know, maybe I was in college. I was awarded a PhD in clinical psychology from University of Illinois in 1973. All right, let's see who you are. To, 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 as a retired National Missouri University professor, um, and prior to that, I was provost of uh, University of Kentucky after retiring as president in terms of Missouri Governor J, uh, J. Nixon. Okay, Governor J. Nixon. I, I, I hope he's the one who read this 52 minutes ago. The intellectual freedom that made public colleges great is under threat. No shit. The intellectual freedom that made public colleges great. Okay, go. In, in Washington Post? Go. Uh, uh, by That's the way, Tom, far. who's Jay Nixon? Washington Post is trying to do a little bit of who's, CNN, who's by the Jay way. Nixon? Former governor of Missouri, right? I get that. But yeah. I mean, who oh. is he? Like, what was he? Uh, uh, okay, Democratic Party. He's probably uh, a monitor. Okay. It's very go, hard to be a hard Go to his Twitter account. Go to, go to Mike's Twitter account. There's a psychologist. Intellectual freedom that may public. Okay, go to that second article right there with Washington Post. Yeah, right there. Click on that. The intellectual freedom that made public college great is under threat. Uh, family members at public universities are under fire in numerous states. Fa faculty members at public universities are under fire. The face, they face a serious and growing threat to the academic freedom that lets them choose their research topics and determine what happens in their classrooms without political politicians looking over their shoulders. Across the nation, state legislators are proposing laws to limit the teaching of certain viewpoints on campus, curb the tenure system, or otherwise blur the already thin line between higher education and state politics. If states continue down this path, they will undercut the excellence of their own institutions of higher education, some of which will currently be counted uh, among the best universities in the world. They could send these institutions to downroads, fire as a gap of intellectual freedom, secured at private university. Okay. Uh, that's good. This is good conversation that well, they're having, by the way. Second sentence in the last paragraph there. Offend the wrong on-campus constituency, and university administrators will soon be lobbied to have the offending scholar banished from campus. This is great, but this is great. I like this conversation. That guy's so, got the right tone. Yeah, to me, to me uh, I want to know what the Dems and Republicans agree on. What do we agree on? Can we agree that China is enemy to state number one? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Can we agree that communism doesn't work? Yes. yes. Can we agree that socialism doesn't work? Yes. Can we agree that the best social programs are created by a capitalistic system? Yes. Let's go through these things that we agree on. Okay, why don't we all, let's disagree on whatever you want to yeah, disagree I mean, who, on. Who reformed welfare, Bill Clinton? Yeah. Then, then let's go write these things that we agree on because- the direction this article is going to edu to challenge people to get better, mm -hmm. listen, it's on you. You go increase your value in the marketplace. I love that. Mm -hmm. I think that's fantastic that that conversation is being had. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.